<clears throat> I just want to do an experiment to its pure curiosity, also not being able to see without glasses and rewinding back to hear my voice and having so much to say and, and yet not at this moment. Just wishing to see from the urge of the reading through of what I could have written, what I could have written or have written already in my mind throughout the whole day and bringing that up and rephrasing in this moment, this way, instead of doing that, just uh, feeling the portraying by being or just doing telling nothing and still hearing your own voice from somewhere, um, everywhere. And making this a bit of instinctual talk, not understanding where to go or what to say and why if a flow just observing the creativity of the flow of the words and if there, this could have been a choreographed piece of speech and the possibility of of that if this were an act in itself which perhaps is we may not be able to disprove but we may also be very convinced that it isn't and observing the catch of the thought of speech flowing by itself, making complex connections, which are uh, observable and which bring certain, uh, what is that word? I cannot find a word, but the catch of that, the seeing that as a secondary thought that having been able to make such complex connection in a flow of speech where there is nothing actually to, to be told. That having seen that is, and the seeing the seeing of the seeing of the thought that has seen this and has been pleased by that. So the pleasing effect, seeing that pleasing effect of having been able to make within the flow a very complex connection and seeing that one has been pleased by that as a secondary. So the pleasing effect of the possibility of the me who has done it apparently, or is it because, is it a me who is becoming pleased, like, hey, I have done this, I, it happened because of me, or going through me, is there the me who is being pleased that, that has happened, the complex connection through a flow has been made in a frequent way, um, discussing the possibility of this speech has been choreographed or not, and the impossibility to prove it, or yet the possibility not to believe in it, that it's actually is choreographed. But understanding this, it brings some pleasing effect that it is it is special. So there's a catch you can catch from there that there's still this myself who is uh, proud of that having made that connection. Is that so? Is that really so? And so if that is so, then we can say that this speech is somewhat being acted with the possibility uh, the expectation to somehow the very for aesthetics for the one who may be listening or is already doing so. May that be yourself, which is the most critical one, I guess, and also the one that you call or may call an other. So in that case, we don't know. We can know. And if knowing this brings a memory which may help establish an awareness about this flow which could be named as a continuous meditation. Now being loudly spoken about as an act Still, the spoken word is on the level of impurity, so long there will be a search or an expectation to aestheticize it, uh, somehow stage it, beautify it, or having an intention to share it in a so-called publicly acceptable or an appropriate way. Therefore, 
breaking the uh, aspect of meditation and making it uh, um, an act, not an artistic act, uh, but just one of so many. And therefore, where at one point does it become pure? So pure is a work of art which has a formula. And, uh, so pure, pure without being named anything, but fitting to that formula. As speech becomes on the level driven from hearing of its pure sound being transformed through a very complex um, or simple enough, which is the same, mechanism to be to come out this way that you can say talk on without stopping, the rendering, rendering a picture without stopping, without an interference of insincerity, dishonesty towards yourself. Always, in any case, anyhow, in any situation, towards yourself, even though it may appear towards another. And so, okay, so that was and one does not necessarily need to continue a start with a subject. And this, what is the discovery of a thing, does not depend on the linearity of. A beginning and an end about a subject and a concluding point with some kind of ceremonial uh, ending. That's not gonna. Okay, let's say um, you can jump from one to the other and then you uh, notice the endlessness of it. Then you come to question I am not going to do this without. It may look very interesting and uh, very shocking, but this is already happening. Look around you. Look. The web, the web of things and beings, a web of whatever is the internet, it's just a temporary uh, transitioning, another transitioning uh, technology whose source is not going to be a uh, transitioning thing. So, just like any other web of things that I look around here, it is somehow easier when uh, the focus of my eyes is when I do not need to see things. So clearly, as when I have my glasses on, then uh, I realize, is it because do I need to escape or what? Is it safer in a blurry world? It's not that, no. It is something else I can connect to the talker from everywhere. The talker I hear, just like you do. From that point, I'm listening, but just like you do, there's no difference in that sense, because then I'm also just like you do, weakly seeing wake things, uh, observing these at the same time, and the talker is talking. So, and apparently this talk can go on endlessly, non-stop thing, and then what to do? It's not really a talk, then in that sense, you can see this as a um, musical piece, actually. It is a musical piece because the talk goes on because of its musicality. It's uh, functioning on some type of wave of its own. It's not really pre thoughts There's no uh, pause between thought and word. It's that is what is the uh, flow. There is so much to say in this, and uh, it's, I never thought this could be this uh, very joyful experience of a talk this way. Well, I don't want to end it. It's like playing a game, maybe in a playground. I'm just amazed a little bit that the talk could go on this this much. I don't want to add things like, let's say, I see pink and pink, pink flag, and this and that. Because uh, that would add a, a secondary uh, or an artificial layer on it. If I would mention what I see, then there is a thinking process entering. So that's what I mean. I'm very careful trying to be as honest and uh, keeping myself really in the flow without the distractions of any. Uh, notice on type of sensation or aesthetic requirements for my own self and what others. So there are so many thoughts already trying to uh, break, come through this talk, which is not that I am not allowing, there's no struggle in here, but I am 
a little bit focused on a surrounding that is often not alienated, alienated. So in my surrounding is uh, very natural. And that, that is because that's, that is therefore because of this natural surrounding, the things that try to, uh, I am putting them into a form. I see that those, those that try to interfere and break the speech, they take the shape, uh, shapes, but instead of they are a adult by the words, they are noticed and being reduced to some kind of shape, just like maybe uh, piece of uh, some bush bushes or <laughs> piece of okay this could be let's say uh, yeah just they take the shape therefore now I understand what it is so that's why the weightness uh, that's why without lenses it works better because all the shapes that I can you see I don't need to uh, so much label them their sharpness is gone so they uh, are read the, the toes that try to interfere this flow of toe are being supported not transitions perhaps to their shapes, but supported to take another wake shape, just like them. Wow, okay. So if I, I would never ever know this if I haven't done this kind of talk right now that this is happening. It's, it's a new discovery also for me. Um, 